Hey guys, I know a lot of you has been asking for this for the Shadow Wave Season 4 PvP build guide. I apologize for the delay. I had to travel for work a lot and I've been traveling um, for the past week or so. And then I actually got back for a few days and I will be on the road again. But the next one will be the last travel so we'll get back into more making more content and both PvE and PvP. But while I have a chance in this quick break I have between uh, two travels, I wanted to give you guys a build planner, build guide that you guys have been asking for so you guys do not do not miss out on the PvP action that is currently happening. The build link planner will be in the description as well covering all the paragon, all the tempering changes and everything you may need. Gonna try to make this video as short as quick as possible getting to the bottom of the things that I want to share with you guys. Uh, gonna go over the gear here real quick. Uh, you can check out the stats here but the main the stats that we really want is cooldown reduction as much as it's possible as much as maximum life as possible. For our tempering we are def defensive option we're gonna go with the blood mist cooldown reduction. You will see when you put this build together you will have two three possibly 1.5 um, second difference on your blood mist cooldown which is a really really important thing uh, in this build when it comes to surviving damage is very high in the current meta so we're trying to rely on trading cooldowns but you will see this common trend cooldown reduction maximum life intelligence and for the first aspect slot here uh, for the defensive aspect we are running um, hardened bone quick and easy 25% damage reduction on chest we are running um, explosive mist aspect to reduce the blood mist cooldown reduction even more and the stats again max life intelligence and we additionally we have ranks to blood mist here to get even more cooldown reduction. Tempering is ones that I didn't touch yet. Um, the ones that do work for us in PvP that we do care about is curse duration and the creepify size. Uh, both are okay wish we could use tendrils but people are mostly unstoppable so we don't get the benefit from that as well but um, these two are most available ones for us to use on that slot the Cryptify size or curse duration the Cryptify size you only need two on the gear it will reach the cap so you won't get more benefit more than if you put more than two on your gear so make sure you have some curse duration and the Cryptify size and you balance these out the way you like it on glows we are running uh, tidal aspect blood wave fires two additional this doesn't buff the damage has nothing to do with our shadow wave damage however it helps us generate two more uh, shadow waves as well as more blood orbs and that helps us a lot in the fight without saying we are running maximum life intelligence and we want to run some attack speed here um, you may ask why we are running attack speed here is that Sometimes we get animation cancelled, especially if we get CC'd or we want to be quickly take advantage of some of the opportunities where you see opponent has their shouts down, opponent has their uh, perma flame shield down and in those moments wave has a weird animation so the more attack speed you have it actually helps casting the wave better, going into blood mist better, better even um, just running um, bone prism better and also you will see in the next one that we get, might run undying on pants and when we have more attack speed we can spam um, corpse explosion you don't have to have any corpses around but you can spam corpse explosion to heal so um, that also helps as well to run some attack speed so i like attack speed on glow specifically here on the slot on pads pants on pants we are running um, might or we might run undying here it's up to your choice um, some fights you might want to have more DR some fights you might want to have more healing and sustain so um, be be the judge of the fight and then see which one you like better the both are good options and like previous example th that extra attack speed actually helps and as far as stats we're running max life intelligence armor this is the only armor piece that we are gonna run armor I designed this build planner in a way that you will be able to hit your caps which is 9 
9250 9, for armor and all the other resistances at 70 percent so if you follow everything you should get um hit the cap just running by one armor affix one thing that i didn't touch is the affixes which one you want the greater um, here in the planner I wanted to keep it realistic maybe you may not be able to get two greater affixes or three so I just put one must greater affix you may say on the helmet for example it's on cooldown reduction um, on the chest you might you may want intelligence or maximum life on pants I put on maximum life so be the, be the judge yourself on the boots for example it's on movement speed so we can be movement speed cap so on and so forth so you will see all those in the planners as well but going back to it and the pants um, this is what we are running on pants and on the boots going down it's freezing a little bit yeah on the pants we are running metamorphosis movement speed like I mentioned intelligence and maximum life we're gonna run as tempering you're gonna run another movement speed and curse duration as well on the amulet we are going to be running cooldown reduction and movement speed and intelligence if you can find a good ami this is a good ami especially if you can find a greater affix on cooldown reduction or movement speed it's really really good obviously tempering options we're gonna be running ultimate cooldown reduction and blood mist cooldown reduction on the rings we are going to be following a similar fashion intelligence damage over time maximum line desecrated crown ultimate cooldown reduction all damage instead of damage over time does give you a bit more damage with the uh, damage over time abilities it's double dipping however i was expecting that to be fixed after the ptr uh, it didn't it still went to the live server and maybe it will get hot fixed and the 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 difference is not as significant so just me i'm running damage over time um, the damage difference is not significant and in case if it gets patched I do not want to deal with finding extra gear to make up for that damage loss but it's up to you if you want to run all, all damage instead of damage over time on your rings you can do so as our aspects we are going to be running blood blood orbs reduce ultimate cooldown fast blood which is one of the must have aspects other one is going to be um, are damned this one got buffed it doesn't need both curses anymore so it's a really no-brainer again all the same stats all the same tempering options and I don't know if I mentioned but on the amulet we are going to be running our ultimate shadow to boost that base damage 166k even more on the focus we are going to be running on the focus we are going to be running a curse touch to have maximum uptime of vulnerability you can change this with elements to get a little bit more damage if you are okay with your vulnerability uptime because we have bone prison and decompose or you can change this with shadow blight blighted aspect but the downtime of that will be a little much higher than pve in pvp so play with what you like um, both viable options I left it at a curse touch for um, players to take advantage of the vulnerability especially if you're becoming a new beginner player for this build so I think that helps to start off with this but then you can put elements to get a little bit more uh, multipliers or you can put blighted to get uh, a bit more uh, even more multiplier but the less uh, more up more downtime Tempering options, unfortunately we have the desecrated ground, but the second one is sort of a waste. You can put elemental surge here, um, that can add some damage, very insignificant damage. But the problem with that, that will also proc thorns. There will be a lot of torn, torn barbs you will see in PvP area, so you will proc thorns and you will one shot yourself. So that's why I don't want to even put it on here to not um, get one shotted by thorns because of that our weapon is we're gonna be running doombringer you will see in this build we'll be going way over over 100k easily one thing to do with that is the doombringer it's a huge amount of boost to our survivability uh and it's just a great weapon if you have it if you don't have it you can run one tier if you want even more damage let's say you start playing the build you're okay with surviving you feel really good playing this build you can actually put two-hander side 
you will see me in the video some that's what i like to do at times especially versus tankier matchups so if you feel like your damage is not enough you can replace focus and doom bringer with um a site but you will lose some cooldowns you will lose some uh survivability so it's more risk more reward type of gameplay you choose you can choose which one feels better for you but if you're just starting and if you have doom bringer i highly suggest it it makes it much easier to get into this build and you will still smoke most of your opponents in the pvp area sacrifices are the same here reapers more shadow damage cold sacrifice more vulnerable to damage and blood sacrifice golem sacrifice for more life going into the skill tree here let's go over that real quick starting with decompose putting three points here so we can get to the next phase we are going to be using the vulnerability option sometimes you can sit back and cast this and get enemies wall which is a helpful option you can choose to use this depending on the fight and how the fight goes i'm not suggesting that you should sit there and cast this but sometimes casting can be helpful especially to wound the enemy for four seconds we are running huge flesh to generate um corpses we don't really benefit from it as much as well because especially the decompose is bugged interaction with the huge flesh however uh, sometimes we do generate corpses with the sh shadow wave and since we are casting shadow wave a lot we do get that benefit at times and we need to spend these points to get to the next cluster so it is kind of um, the way it is and it's still not a dead uh, passive so Going to the next one, we are taking Blood Mist for ranks here, creating corpses here, so that works out really well. We are getting our Blighted Corpse Explosion just to have more area of denial and lucky hit procs to get cooldown reduction and then consume corpses. We have our Bone Prison, uh, we're putting 5 points into here, reduce the cooldown as much as possible. This is also gives us a cooldown reduction which is very nice. As well as it's going to help us wound the enemies inside for 8 seconds. So which is um, highly, highly val valuable there. We're putting Grim Harvest. We're not using any essence in this build. To get to the field by dead. As we go into mist. We are going to be activating this. And as we consume corpses. We are going to be activating this to get some more multipliers. We're taking all these passives. Obviously get more uh, damage reduction. Uh, some movement speed. As well as more uh, multipliers. Mm -hmm to uh and when the enemies are cursed and we're taking our decrypify i guess uh it's one of the must-haves here it also gives us a very valuable dr in this um meta so make sure you apply this as regularly as possible we are going to be have a curse duration from our gear and then decrypify size so we are going to have a really good uptime on this one you're gonna be running gruesome mending to receive more healing all the blood orbs we are picking up we're gonna get buffed by this so it's a valuable passive here and then we are putting just one point in transfusion just because we have an extra point it will sometimes very small chance but it will cast a uh, blood orb when we shoot the wave the wave itself will still be a blood damage so it will generate a blood orb it will have a chance to generate a blood orb for us going down we are taking the gloom very important uh, we're taking Reaper's Pursuit only one point here because we are going to be movement speed capped anyways. We are going to be taking Crippling Darkness here. Just one point in, uh, to help with us Shadow Blight first of all. And the second of all sometimes it is important to get that CC chance here and there. Taking our Blood Wave obviously. Taking our um, Sacrifices and taking our key passive Shadow Blight. One thing I want to talk about here. If you are fighting Torn Barbs. You want to come back to your skill tree and actually remove this skill point because shadow blight will proc thorns and that's sometimes if you do not understand how you get one shot it that is why you can take this off and put it into rotmas vigor or you can spend that skill point somewhere else um but yeah if you're fighting a thorn barb you do not want to have this passive on hence why i have changed some of the build I was running spiked armor to get the armor cap however um, running into thorns this skill has thorns in it 
so their thorns proc your thorns and you end up one shotting yourself so if you're fighting thorns barb you do not want to run this passive as well you will see the paragon board here i'm not gonna go into node by node um this is i call it a starter paragon board it's a bit on the tankier side while building some good damage baked into it by taking important legendary notes taking important glyphs however it's tempted to be a little bit on the tankier side so there's some min maxing you can do on top of this paragon board you can message me you can comment below if you have any ideas i will respond and say yeah that's a good idea or you can i can bounce back and forth ideas with you however um I think it is a good starting board. I have designed it in a way it will get you to all your resistances caps. So you will hit your cap here. You will hit a really high maximum life. You're going to be taking all the important maximum life nodes from this Paragon board. And it will get you right at your armor cap as well. So it's going to be a really good starter board for you to get into PvP where it covers your resistances covers your armor cap and covers your max life pool to get you started some flex spots here flesh eater you may not want to run it i can understand it, you should have a really high hop time of it just because you're going to be running blood mist and you'll be consuming corpses you're going to be going back into blood mist as much as possible so it will activate quite often so it's a good legendary note to pick up if you do not like that, obviously you can take those points and separate into other glyphs or you can put a six, six glyph here as well as I, I am running some um, damage to health to damage to injured. You can also take those and invest into somewhere else as well. But this should get you to a really good place starting. I think this covers the majority that everything that I wanted to cover in this video. I hope this gets you right at the good place to start PvPing with the Shadow Wave uh, build in Season 4. I'm going to be obviously keep making changes, keep testing stuff. There are a lot of things I want to test. And I apologize for the delay to get this out to you guys. Um, like I said, I was doing some PvE stuff. And then I start traveling for work. Then I was able to only play on my Steam Deck. And then gearing is extra hard so i still wanted to test stuff out i didn't want to just put something out there without some checking out some of the tempering options especially the cooldown reduction i tried some dodge stuff and um i think this is this build planner is gonna be a really good place to start and um gonna be a very not fully optimized maybe just yet there might be some things to change especially in the paragon and the gear and um improvements here and there but as a starting guide, it should get you to a really good place where you can jump into the PvP zone and enjoy quite a, uh, quite a lot. So hopefully that is my wish. With that being said, I hope this was helpful. Again, thank you so much for being patient. Um, I tried to respond to all the comments while I was gone. My Discord server is active. You can join there as well. And a lot of folks have been sharing ideas there back and forth while I was being busy. So really appreciate you guys. I have a few more traveling to do. But after that I'll be back in full sprint. So there will be a lot more videos and guides to cover as well. And I hope to see you guys on the next video. Cheers.